Ocean Gate, Titan, Titanic. Three words have become infamous in the last months as the ocean has once again asserted its dominance on the human race. Questionable engineering decisions may have led to the demise of Titan, but today we will go back in time and explore the greatest marine engineering feat since the first boat. Off the southeast coast of Japan, the Mariana Islands dot the Pacific. The reputation as a luxurious tropical getaway is only preceded by one of the most famous geological formations on the planet, the Mariana Trench. Widely considered as the deepest point in the ocean, the crescent-shaped trench stretches for more than 1,500 miles and is 43 miles at its widest, and extends a mind-boggling 36,000 feet to its floor, aptly named the Challenger Deep. At these depths, water pressure increases 1,000-fold to a soul-crushing 15,750 psi, and water temperature drops to 37 degrees Fahrenheit. Such harsh conditions make life impossible for all but the hardiest of creatures. Since its discovery in 1875 by HMS Challenger, the Mariana Trench has received continued attention from scientifics and adventurers alike, with 22 crewed and 7 uncrewed dives to varying depths and locations. It's an impressive number, but today we will discuss the first, and until recently, depth record holder expedition conducted by the US Navy as part of Project Necton. The year 1960, SS Santa Marina, escorted by the destroyer USS Lewis, arrived in Guam, ferrying the Trieste, a deep diving research bath escape. Its hull had been modified with a larger gasoline float, larger ballast tubes, and a newly designed heavy pressure sphere, which would house a crew of two. Jacques Picard and Don Walsh crammed themselves into the spherical vessel 7.1 feet in diameter with 5 inch thick walls to protect the vessel from collapsing under the extreme underwater pressure. At 8 am on January 23rd, the Trieste began its descent into the Pacific. At a rate of 3 feet per second, the craft dove through the first layer of the ocean. The epipelagic or sunlight zone where an abundance of marine plant and animal life flourishes. The pressure within this zone can range from 1 to 20 times that on the surface. Within 5 minutes of free diving, the Trieste has already entered the second layer of the ocean, the mesopelagic or twilight zone. The light barely penetrates this layer and life becomes more sparse. Very few plants, plankton, hardy fish and crustaceans are able to survive the harsh environment. Pressure can reach up to 100 times that on the surface and temperature drops to near freezing. Approximately 15 minutes later, the craft has reached an area of total and perpetual darkness, the basipelagic or midnight zone. All light has disappeared and the Trieste has turned on its floodlights to view what little life exists in the deep sea. Truly alien creatures such as the anglerfish, snake dragonfish, and vampire squid have been discovered at these depths. Almost an hour of diving through complete darkness, the craft has entered a zone of darker darkness. This isn't your average everyday darkness. This is advanced darkness. The abyssopelagic or abyssal zone contains the abyssal plain, or the ocean floor. The zone covers 60% of the Earth's surface and is the final resting place for countless vessels and sailors throughout history. For most of the world's oceans, the abyssal plain is the deepest point. However, key subduction zones caused by the movement of plate tectonics create chasms in the ocean floor. After another 30 minutes of diving, the Trieste has entered the Mariana subduction zone, affectionately known as the Mariana Trench. 30,000 feet into the 36,000 feet dive, Walsh and Picard were startled as the outer window of the porthole cracked under the tremendous pressure which had reached 600 times that on the surface. After damage assessment, the dive continued. 4 hour and 47 minutes after being dropped into the sea, the Trieste had finally reached the deepest point in the world, the Challenger Deep. For the next 20 minutes, Walsh and Picard looked out the cracked porthole for signs of life. The creatures they observed are thought to be sea cucumbers. Walsh and Picard claimed that the Challenger Deep was boring, as they could only see very little through the darkness and the cloud of dust that had formed around them. In 20 minutes, the Trieste dropped its metal weights and started its 3 hour and 15 minute trip back to the surface. Ultimately, Walsh and Picard had opened a Pandora's box of marine exploration which has not been closed to this very day. 